Dreams Louder. Hello guys, this is Biology Insights and welcome back to another video lecture of the series Inheritance Biology. We have learned inheritance so far and are discussing extension of Mendelism from last few lectures. We are left with very few and today we will learn pleiotropy and polygenic inheritance. Many of us mug up with this too, but if we see it closely, the difference is quite clear from their names only. Pleiotropy is derived from Greek word. Pleo means many and tropic means affecting. So pleiotropy means one gene affecting multiple phenotypes. While polygenic inheritance, as name suggests, poly means many and genic means genes. So polygenic is many genes affecting single phenotype. Just a game of words. Now let's understand pleiotropy first. Do you know that approx 40% of white furred cats with blue eyes are deaf? Even if the white cat has one blue eye and one natural colored eye, the ear at the side of blue eye would not be working properly. Weird but interesting, right? Do you know why it happens? Because the gene responsible for blue eye is also responsible for decreasing ear color fluid. Did you see that? One gene responsible for two phenotypes. This is called pleiotropy. Exactly same phenomenon is seen in Wanderberg syndrome type 1 and type 3 in humans, where defect in Pax3 gene leads to bright blue eye, light skin patches, and some extent of congenital hearing loss. The most widely cited example of pleiotropy is phenylketoyuria, which is caused by deficiency of the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase that converts phenylalanine to tyrosine. Now, defect in PHA gene coding for the enzyme results in many phenotypes like mental retardation, eczema, pigment defects, and of course, PKU disease. Well, it's not that every pleiotropic gene is giving problems or disease. Some are helpful and really necessary for us. For example, P53 gene of humans. This gene stops reproduction of damaged cells and lead to cell death. So ultimately, it prevents cancer. You might say this guy is great, but at the other side, it also stops division of stem cells, so they cannot renew or replace the weak tissues during aging. Not so great, right? This situation is called antagonistic pleiotropy, in which the expression of a single gene causes competing effects, some of which are beneficial and some of which are negative to the fitness of an organism. Do you ever think what could be the benefits to study pleiotropy? Well, it gives great information about evolution of genes and gene families. Pleiotropy proves the fact that many proteins have multiple roles in cells. Now that we are done with pleiotropy, let's move to polygenic inheritance. Polygenic inheritance is also known as quantitative inheritance. And as we have seen earlier, it shows role of many genes for single phenotype. Understand that polygenic inheritance should not be confused with multiple alleles. As in multiple alleles, three or more alleles are present in the same locus of which any two alleles are present in an organism. For example, ABO blood group system, which is controlled by three alleles. While in polygenic inheritance, as we saw, multiple genes are present on different locus affecting single phenotype. So multiple alleles are about alleles, while polygenic inheritance is about genes. Before we get details of polygenic inheritance, keep in mind that polygenic genes do not show complete penetrance, where one allele completely masks the effect of the other. Rather, it shows incomplete penetrance, where the offspring is a mixture of the phenotypes displayed in the parents. One simple example of it is skin color. We all know that pigment melanin is responsible for dark color of skin. And interestingly, there are three different genes to control human skin color. Let's assume ABC genes are contributing alleles that produce melanin, giving dark skin tone. And ABC are non-contributing alleles, giving light skin tone. If two heterozygous parents give rise to a baby, how many possible allele combinations would be there? The answer is 64 combination, which shows 7 different skin tones. Have you ever thought about the skin tone in this way before? Well, if you want to think, 
Think about your height too. Can you guess how many genes are there to control height? 400. That's right. 400 genes can affect the height. And this is the exact reason why even average height parents could have very tall child or heighted parents could have short child. Apart from these, hair color, autism and longevity, and even intelligence is also an example of polygenic inheritance. Expression of polygenes is greatly influenced by environmental conditions also. Genes function differently in different environmental conditions because environment regulates the activity of certain genes and sets them on or off. The range of phenotype possible under the different environmental conditions from the same genotype is termed as norm of reaction. It is narrow for certain genotypes and broad from some genotypes. For example, as we saw, genotypes involved in human height have very broad norm of reaction. So we can say if identical twins are raised in two different environments, they will express some different characters such as intelligence, depression, height, skin color, etc. Someone said it correctly, pay attention to surrounding of you. Next time you look at the mirror, notice your phenotype and think about the genes working for it. Share this video to your friends and show them the beauty of biology. If you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon to get notified for more insights of biology. See you in the next lecture.